this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Skywatcher Star Adventurer a tracking mount for astrophotography and uh, here is the uh, the item the main body of the mount now first of all I want to say a big thank you to my friend uh, Alex who uh, kindly lent me his Star Adventurer Pro so I could make this tutorial now, there are two competing uh, tracking mounts or portable tracking mounts uh, for astrophotography that really dominate the market that is this the Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro and the Ioptron Skyguider Pro I've actually got the Ioptron one and Alex has got this one uh, and they're very similar they have a few pros and cons but they're very similar but I'm assuming that you've bought one of these and you want to know how to set it up properly so that's the purpose of this tutorial so let's get started first of all you're going to need uh, a sturdy tripod so I've got one here all, all ready to go and the first thing we need to do is to set up this altazimuth bracket now the altaz bracket as the name suggests has got the ability to adjust the altitude and the azimuth which is the rotation here the altitude is adjusted using this uh, thumb screw uh, but first you have to unlock this locking lever and once that's loose you can then turn the altitude uh, until the graticule and the arrow the arrow points to the number which matches your latitude on the graticule so in my case 51 degrees so I set that to 51 degrees and then lock this off now on Alex's model I don't know if they're all the same but they may, may all have this problem as there seemed to be a tolerancing issue where when this lever was tight there was still a bit of slop uh, in this uh, altitude adjustment it wasn't stiff and tight as it should be so he fixed that very effectively by taking a small piece of acetate with a hole in the middle, fully undoing this lever and taking it out, uh, removing this piece and inserting that sheet of acetate just on one side uh, as a shim, putting it all back in again and tightening it up. And now it tightens up really, really well. It's really firm, so it's not a big problem, nothing to worry about. But if yours is wobbly, still wobbly or unable to move when you've tightened up this lever, then you need to do the same thing. So uh, that's the altitude setting. Now the azimuth is adjusted with these two bolts, but they won't be able to move unless you first loosen off these two screws. Now uh, the, these two screws uh, are actually uh, Allen key uh, bolts. You'll need to use the Allen key to loosen them off. Just get them just loose enough that you can turn these two screws in opposition to one another. Uh, if, you, if you can't move them, then these are too tight. So, so make sure that you can do that and also um, center them so you've got about the same number of threads visible on either side so you've got an equal amount of adjustment either side for your polar alignment okay so once the Altaz head is set up you can mount it onto the top of your tripod you need to make sure once it's on there that it's good and firm that the tripod is level so there's a spirit level bubble on the side here and you can just adjust that to get it level and you want this direction here to be pointing pretty roughly towards Polaris so that you're going to be able to see Polaris through your polar scope and therefore be able to do your polar alignment uh, when it comes to doing that. Now I'm going to show you two setups uh, of this mount today one using a ball head and no counterweight bar and the other one without the ball head uh, but with the counterweight bar. The ball head is my own and it's not part of the, the, uh, the Star Adventure, it doesn't come with it uh, but gives you complete freedom of how you frame your shot with your camera so when you want to fill the whole frame with a shot, say you're choosing the Milky Way with a short focal length, a wide angle lens, uh, and you're not uh, putting loads of weight on top of your mount, then the ball head is a good way to go. It gives you that freedom for framing your shot. If you're using a heavier setup, maybe a longer focal length lens, and you're only trying to get an object that's filling part of your frame, you're better off using the counterweight setup uh, that, so that you can properly balance the mount. Uh, and uh, hopefully get better tracking uh, from it. Uh, but you will be restricted on the uh, angle orientation of the sensor to the scene, which is why it's not best suited for things like wide angle uh, shots of the Milky Way. So let's get started. So we need to be able to fit the mount onto this Altaz bracket. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is attach the dovetail plate uh, to the bottom of the mount. Here's the dovetail plate and uh, it's got obviously a main threaded bolt but it's also got a secondary uh, sec thumb, uh, thumb screw on there which engages into the tip of it engages into this little white indentation here and that's to stop this plate from uh, rotating uh, uh, against the body of the mount so we'll just screw that in making sure that the tip of the thumb screw 
uh, is engaged in that little recess and then tighten that up with, with the allen key. So with that in there good and firm we can now engage the head of the mount onto the plate and tighten up the screw. So that's the first part of our setup. We're pointing roughly north in this direction. We've got our latitude set up correctly. Our azimuth bolts are about 50-50 uh, and uh, now we're ready to put a load on there. Now one thing that's different between the two setups and um, we're going to sort of diverge now on these two different uh, assemblies. One thing that is different is uh, when you do the polar alignment. So I need to explain that to you. So I'm now going to show you the ball head configuration uh, with the mount. Now the ball head is, uh, does not come with the uh, Star Adventurer. Uh, I use a Vanguard BBH200 ball head which has an Arca Swiss clamp at the top standard quarter inch thread at the bottom. Now to fit it onto the uh, Star Adventurer you need to use this uh, a dovetail plate with a quarter inch thread at the top and just screw the two together like this and now that's ready to be fitted on the mount. But after we fitted this onto the mount because there's no hole through here obviously uh, it will block the view of the polar scope and therefore when you're going to use the ball head you must do your polar alignment at this stage before you fit the ball head onto the mount. So to do your polar alignment, you remove the plug from the top, the eyepiece uh, cover from the bottom, and you may well want to use the uh, eyepiece illuminator, reticule illuminator, which is this separate piece. Now it comes with a little adapter plugged on the end of it, which you need to remove for this particular setup, and then you plug that into the top. So you turn it on by tightening the thread on the bottom, and adjust the brightness of it with the little adjuster wheel uh, on, the, uh, on the side there. So you plug that into the hole at the top there and now you can perform your polar alignment. Now I've done a separate tutorial about polar alignment so I'm not going to go through the details of that here. I'll put a link to that tutorial at the end of this video for you. But essentially it involves looking through the polar scope and adjusting the altitude and the azimuth bolts to get uh, polar alignment. And one thing I should mention is that my friend Alex has invested in a right angle polar scope adapter. Uh, this is made by uh, Omegon and uh, I think it's quite dear uh, but a uh, very good idea. It really cranes your neck looking up through the polar scope but when you put a right angle adapter on there you just uh, slot it on and, uh, and you can look downwards into the polar scope which is really fantastic. So that's an interesting idea to think about. So once your polar aligned, you will remove the graticle illuminator and switch it off and put that away. Replace the plug in the top and the cover in the bottom, all the time being careful not to disturb your polar alignment, so being very gentle uh, with the mount. And we can now attach the ball head assembly onto the top of the mount and tighten that up. Now to attach the camera to the ball head, you need to have a matching Arca Swiss plate on your camera. I've actually got an Arca Swiss L bracket on my camera which allows me to mount the camera portrait or landscape to the ball head. But if all you've got is an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom of the camera, that's fine because you've got all that freedom with the ball head of where you're going to point. Okay, so now we can fit the camera onto the ball head. Like so. And we've now got all that freedom. We can loosen off the ball head and we can pivot the ball head around, we can point to anywhere in the sky we like, we can take our shots, portrait or landscape, etc. So probably at this point uh, I would fit the remaining items. So I would fit a dew heater to the front of my lens, switch my lens to manual focus, and set up my uh, ISO to optimum. There's a separate tutorial on that if you want to watch it, I'll put the link at the end. Um, turn off long exposure noise uh, reduction, high ISO noise reduction, and, uh, and point to uh, a bright star to get focus. I also fit a wireless a remote control as well, very important not to be touching your mount when you want to take photos. So yeah, pointing to a bright star to get your uh, focus, um, using live view and digital zoom to get that star, bright star looking as small as possible, maybe even using a batten off mask on the front to get your focus spot on. Once you've got your focus, uh, you can now frame your shot Repoint to frame your shot, take a few example shots to get uh, uh, you know, so that you know you've composed it how you want it. 
and now you can switch on the tracking. There's a, a south-north switch on one side of the mount and uh, depending on whether you're in the southern or northern hemisphere you need to set that up appropriately so S for the southern hemisphere, N for the northern hemisphere. Once you've done that you can turn your attention to the other side. Now this dial sets your tracking rates at the moment it's off. If you switch it to the star symbol the mount is now tracking at the sidereal rate so it will uh, track with the stars in the sky and enable you to do long exposure shots. Uh, I would suggest that you could probably do up to two or three minutes uh, if you've done your polar alignment really nicely. You can actually also uh, track at solar rate so if you're using a solar filter and taking the appropriate precautions you can track the sun and uh, you can also track the moon with the lunar rate and if you're taking a shot of a scene which is uh, has a, a static foreground or, uh, such as uh, I don't know, maybe uh, a mountain or a building uh, with the Milky Way or the, the stars in the background then um, you may want to do a 50-50 so you're tracking at half sidereal rate and that way you uh, can halve the length of the star trails uh, whilst halving the amount of blurring of the foreground. I personally don't like to do that. I would much prefer to take a number of shots of the sky on full sidereal rate uh, and stack those to get my final sky picture and then switch the tracking completely, uh, completely off uh, and then retake a shot as well exposed on the foreground and then merge the two in the post-processing to really get the best of both worlds and get sh everything sharp in the shot. There are also times two, times six, and times twelve uh, tracking rates, and uh, those are for um, probably more for video, where you're doing uh, time lapse or long exposure time lapse or video uh, shoots. The other thing to remember when you're uh, setting up to go out and do astrophotography with this mount is that it's battery operated, uh, and you need to remember to have enough power. So. Uh, it's got four AA batteries uh, underneath this cover. Make sure that they have plenty of juice in them and that you bring a completely new set of batteries with you on each trip so that you don't run out of power. You may notice this block on here, which may, you know, may have noticed doesn't come with the Adventurer. It's actually a bracket that my friend Alex has put on there uh, to enable him to mount a uh, camera, uh, sorry, an iPhone onto the top of his mount. So if you want to use the counterweight bar, you've got that heavier load and maybe a longer lens, you're going to need the, uh, the green bracket with the deck adjuster plate on it and the counterweight bar and the counterweight. So we'll start by engaging the counterweight onto the bar, so just loosen off the thumb screw on the counterweight, slide the bar through the counterweight and tighten off the thumb screw on the counterweight. And now we can just engage that into the end of the green plate. Screw that in until it's tight. Okay, and now I've got this assembly. Okay, that assembly can now go on top. Now, again, you need to make sure that the little plug has been removed uh, up the top here so that the polar scope can actually uh, see the sky. And on this occasion, you can now leave your polar alignment until after you've uh, mounted everything, which is a real advantage with this setup. So I'm going to set the green bar about halfway uh, along. So this thumb screw is about halfway along the green bar. Uh, and uh, I'm going to just loosen that clutch there so it can swing. And you can see now that we've got this balance adjustment, which we didn't have on the uh, ball, ball joint configuration, the ball head configuration. So we can now attach the camera using the threaded hole. Notice I've got no L bracket on the camera now. And I'm going to engage that bolt into the threaded hole on the bottom of the camera and tighten it up, center bolt. And the inner bolt is, is holding the camera on. The outer uh, fins are the detonation clutch. So I can loosen that now and then I can turn. In fact, you can turn the whole thing by hand very freely with the with the clutch undone when the clutch is done up and tight you can't do that but you can still turn the declination worm and make fine adjustments to the pointing of your camera you can also make adjustments in RA by loosening the RA clutch here 
and then rotating the whole thing. Now of course we're going to need to balance the mount. So uh, undoing the RA clutch and bringing the camera to, and counterweight bar to a horizontal position enables us to, to check the balance. Now here you can see it's slightly camera heavy. Uh, if I move the counterweight to the end now it's counterweight heavy. So we just need to adjust the position of the counterweight on the bar until it's balanced. Now, if you've got a particularly heavy load, and even with the counterweight at the very end of the bar, you're still not achieving uh, balance and you are uh, still camera heavy, you can, of course, move the green plate uh, with this thumb screw loosened off and drop that plate down, uh, provided nothing fouls up at the top here. And that will give you more effective leverage with the counterweight, and you may then be able to achieve balance. Ultimately, you can actually buy a second weight uh, and, uh, and increase the weight, but uh, only if you really need to. So let's just get this balanced. Okay, and that's reasonably nicely balanced now. So now we can frame up our shot by loosening off both clutches. We can go off and point, actually point at a start to get focus first and get our focus nicely organized, then get back and frame up our shot, wherever our target is lock off the both clutches and then you could do a fine adjustment with the worm on the deck and if you want to make fine adjustment on the RA you've got the two arrow buttons on the body of the mount which you can press but it is a very slow movement uh, when you do that and it can take uh, quite a bit of time to get your pointing correct. So unlike with the ball head configuration we can uh, do our polar alignment as the very last step so when everything else is set up when you've got your uh, wireless remote you've got your uh, dew heater band put on, you're star focused, you're framed on your target, you are basically ready to start shooting but you still haven't polar aligned. So the very last thing we do before we start shooting our shots is to polar align. So I'm uh, assuming that of course that your mount's been aligned and roughly, made roughly level and roughly pointing north uh, as, uh, as I described earlier. Um, but now we can do our polar alignment. So again we take the cover off, um, the uh, Poloscope uh, eyepiece, uh, already removed the plug in there before I fitted this uh, the counterweight bar and we again we've got the uh, Polar Rescue Illuminator. Now in this configuration with the counterweight bar on this little adapter needs to be uh, added to the Polar Rescue Illuminator and that basically allows you to plug it into the green bar here uh, like this and uh, it actually slides up and down so you need to align it with the actual poloscope hole and switch it on and uh, set the brightness as before. So again, uh, doing your polar alignment, then switching on to start tracking and, uh, and you're away, start taking your shots. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. I've showed you two different configurations of how you can use the Star Adventurer. Uh, it's a smashing uh, tracking mount, uh, really portable and uh, you should have a lot of fun with it. So I wish you clear skies and uh, just want to say a big thank you to those of you who've already subscribed to my channel. Uh, if you leave a comment or uh, would, li or would uh, like to honour me with a subscription, I'd be uh, very grateful for that. Uh, it keeps me motivated and keeps me making these tutorials. So uh, all the best, clear skies, and uh, see you next time. Bye.